we have Dr. Shaham Rajab Lalush. Dr. Shaham is an academic, scholar, chief editor, and architectural engineer with a background in urbanism. He writes and speaks regularly on how to improve people's quality of life through sustainable and smart design and construction of our buildings and cities. He believes that the built environment is made for people and it should be designed and constructed as such. He is editor-in-chief of the referee journal Open House International and associated editor in other index journals and book series. He holds a PhD from Harriet Watt University in the UK and a PG diploma in each in, in, arch in architectural design and a bachelor's in architectural engineering from the University of Aleppo in Syria. Dr. Shem's research, teaching, and services were recognized for excellence. He's, he's the winner of several international and local awards, and his research was featured in the media and the press. He's published widely in the International Referee Press and awarded total research grants and project funds as PI and COI of close to a million dollars. Dr. Shaham hold, held keynote speeches at international conferences in Spain and Italy, and many other talks, workshops, and presentations. He acts as a reviewer for a range of reputable and high-impact journals, and he reviewed for more than 18 international conferences from China to, U to the UK. He is currently teaching and researching at Sultan Qaboos University in the Sultanate of Oman in the, in the capacity of associate professor having previously researched and taught at universities in the UK and Syria. There, he also worked in several architectural consultancy firms and on two European commissioned funded projects. His presentation today is From Normativism to Substantivism in the Design of the Mosque of the Future. Please help me welcome Dr. Shehem to the podium. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my presentation today will be in English, but uh, if you allow me to speak a couple of words in Arabic first. I hope I will know Ashkur Jazz Tablotri for Zemo Methel of Dr. Mshariel Naim Ledauti Hunelium, who had a share of queer at his fee. Well, Rahib Bilhadirin say that was said there. Well, it's Mahuli Ahos Bitterheib, Walid the Walidatil Hadrin Leomana, Walid the Lustad Rajab Lalush. أحد المؤلفين الثلاثة للموسوعة القرآنية التفصيل في إعراب آيات التنزيل بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شرف لنا أشكر الله يسلمكم يقال من يعمل بيده فهو عامل ومن يعمل بيده وعقله فهو صانع ومن يعمل بيده وعقله وقلبه فهو فنان فما بالكم أيها الحضور الكريم بمن يعمل بيده وعقله وقلبه وإيمانه هذا هو مصمم المساجد مساجد التي تحتفل به جائزة الفوزان كل دورة من دوراتها. اليوم سوف أتكلم. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you all to my presentation. And today I'm going to talk about a topic that's actually maybe uncommon in 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 mosque architecture. Actually, I'm going to call. Uh, to a move from normative theory in mosque design to substantive theory that's based on evidences. Uh, I'm, I came from Sultan Qaboos University, and as our chair introduced me, I'm the chief editor of uh, Open House International. Uh, I'm uh, briefly going to uh, take you uh, in a quick journey through my philosophy of research, or, or my approach to uh, uh, research in terms of philosophy and practice. Then I'm going to talk about hierarchy of knowledge and its relation to mosque design. Then I'm going to explain what normative approach is in mosque design. Then I'm going to move to substantive approach. And if I have the time, I'll cover morphology, emotional impact, and environmental assessment of mosque design. Uh, first of all, I would like to start with a quote uh, for Professor Phil Hillier, who said in his famous book, uh, Space is the Machine, architecture is analogous to language. And actually, if you think about it, it's true. Language is, is, is consists of uh, words that exist in dictionary and grammar that we all know. Uh, but if you compose words using these grammars without human involvement, the, the sentence might be illegitimate, might have no value for the people. And so is architecture. We have elements, and we have principles of design, unity, harmony, gestalt approach, etc. 
but if you don't involve human being in the design of the, pro uh, the design process, uh, the building, the product will be uh, likely to be, I would say, uh, have a less value for uh, the inhabitant. Uh, and this is actually uh, the motto that we use in our research. Uh, I personally believe that a building or a city is not sustainable unless it's seen as such by its inhabitants, regardless how much energy it com consumes, regardless how much uh, embedded energy, how it's located within society, it has to be seen as sustainable from its inhabitants. Uh, we start our uh, uh, um, um, philosophy of research uh, by saying, saying that I, I view the world as based on regularities. That doesn't mean that truth does not exist, but maybe our limited capability is, does not allow us to capture truth. And actually, uh, Allah Jalla wa'ala, Allah fil Qur'an, kamithal, uh, Allah in Qur'an said as an example, qul ruhu min amri rabbi, indicating that we'll not be able to understand truth, all truth. Whereas regularities can be distilled from the interaction between our mind and social or physical phenomenon. And this is why I, where I start our research. And this is where I think mosque design should start. Mosque de design research in mosque designs should actually try to distill the regularities through history in a way that's relevant to the community in order to produce what's so-called successful mosque design. Although I have a lot of issues with the word successful. At a practical level, I think good research starts with a simple question. So we cannot start a research with saying, what is the best mosque? What are the criteria of the best mosque? That's so complex uh, to deal with. It has to be simplified. Then it has to go through a sophisticated and rigid, and I emphasize rigidity here, data collection methods, and then scientifically valid data analysis. Uh, and it ends, ends up with a simple answer. So it starts simple, and it ends simple in a way that lay people can make use of this information. And our role as a scientist lies here, is to ensure rigidity. And this is what's missing, I think, in mosque design. Mosque design, if you look at it and uh, uh, reflect this on mosque design, uh, mosque design mostly is based on wishful uh, approach. So I'm here uh, today to call for a paradigm shift, paradigm change, and we had a lot of discussion about it yesterday. Uh, not on the product, not on the shape, not on the composition, but rather on the process. Uh, from my perspective, research, uh, most design should either adopt a design by research approach or evidence-based design approach, and those are different. Design by research is where you do the research in order to improve your design, whereas evidence-based design is where you collect accumulative evidences that others come up with or came up with, in order to improve your design. Uh, I think we all agree that there are a matrix of factors, sometimes conflicting factors, influence most design. S uh, sociological, economical, political, architectural, the creativity of the designer. All of these approaches or influences are wishful approaches, do not have solid substance uh, data uh, that supports these approaches. Uh, and we are now in the age of globalization, age of technology, IR4, Industrial Revolution 4, co-design approach, neuroarchitecture, uh, digital participation, and yet mosque design still based on our liking, mostly. Uh, we need to move now, not later, to a more substantive approach, to evidence-based approach to mosque design. And this is the hierarchy of knowledge as I view it, it starts with ontology, our relation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then epistemology, how we know what we know, which is substantial and very important here to actually accept that we are here to reduce our ignorance and not to increase our knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qal, وَمَا أُتِيتُهُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا So we need to accept that we are here to reduce our knowledge, not to increase our to reduce our ignorance, sorry, not to increase our knowledge. Then it goes to methodology that dictates the method, and then we come up with the techniques or protocols. 
And uh, research philosophy, there are a lot. I can summarize them into two approaches, normative approach and substantive approach. Uh, and understanding these approaches are important for research, uh, designers of mosques. This is the missing link between research and design. We do research. I am an architect by, 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 by uh, education, and I'm a scientist now. And I claim I know both words, and both know words need to talk to each other. They are not talking to each other. Uh, this will open new doors for uh, mosque uh, design. So what's normative uh, theory or normative approach? It's actually wishful approach. It's based on projection of a, virgin, of a vision of what could be good. They have could and would on their dic dictionary. They lack proof of goodness. And when they use uh, emulation from the past, they use it in superficial way. Famous examples of these approaches is Howard Garden City and uh, Kevin Lynch image of the city. Very famous, widely studied, widely researched, but they are still wishful approaches. Uh, if we reflect this on mosque, mosque starts as a, a simple urban artifact that has many functions that we all know. Uh, it created livable space around it and actually it shaped the city, especially Islamic cities. And then, with the, with the time, it transferred, while maintaining the function, into a symbolic architectural component of Islamic city, then an articulation of power, as we can see in the Omoyes uh, period and later in the Seljuqis period also, Ma Mamlukis period. And nowadays, we are talking about how the mosque is can be considered as a representation of identity. Uh, if we go through the history of uh, mosque design, from Al-Khilafa period, Umawi Abbasi, Fatimi, Seljuqi, uh, etc., until nowadays, the focus has been on the architectural articulation, on how the building looks, on the composition, on how the elevation elements uh, goes uh, with each other. Uh, and nowadays, we are in the age of AI, artificial intelligence, and this is the most famous one that architects has been using for the last six or seven months. It's quite a new uh, website. Uh, it's a, a artificial intelligence text-to-image generator. The idea here, you don't design anything. You describe it using text. And then the artificial intelligent bot generates the design for you. And actually, it generates four designs. Then you select one to upscale it into a more detailed design. Example that has not to do, not to do uh, with mosques, but to uh, give you the idea. Here, the creator input the text, cinematic, paper cut art, paper illustration, boat on the ocean, kraken, which is a mythical creature in the Greek uh, mythology, uh, colorful, uh, very detailed 8K in the resolution, and the uh, AI bot generated this picture. And architects loved this, and actually this creates uh, big questions and uh, very uh, important questions for mosque design and actually for architectural education. Those are other examples where the text underneath were input, as simple as this. Couple of sentences, you get a design that you cannot imagine even. When this was applied on mosques, We've got some decent attempts. Again, I emphasize the architect here did not design anything of this. The architect described using text. And here becomes the, the, the ability of, or, or comes into play, how good you can describe your imagination so the AI can understand where you want to go. Unfortunately, I don't know the author of this. I just collected this from one of the groups of, on Facebook. And there is a more matured attempt by uh, May Abdul Samad, I think. This is from her LinkedIn uh, profile. And we can see that AI, again, it focuses on how the building look, how the mosque looks, what are the architectural uh, features and uh, articulations. There are some extreme attempts. These are some extreme attempts. Also, I don't know who is the, 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 the generator. The good thing about uh, Midjourney is uh, copyright free. So you can use the pictures as, as much as you want, yeah. If you Google AI uh, Midjourney showcase, you will get a library of pictures. 
So you can here see how far AI can go. So this leads us to ask ourselves where we are going with the mosque design. We've been actually circulating in the same cycle for, for, for decades now. We have been focusing on how the mosque looks more than how the mosque functions with evidences. Uh, and all of these are wishful, okay, wishful uh, approaches, very difficult to defend. I put myself in the jury's position and it's really, really hard to judge about the shortlisting mosques because there's no evidences, the process is not known. As, 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 it's, it's, as they say, uh, the journey is as important as the destination. The design process is as important as the products. And unfortunately, from my perspective, we've been focusing on the product and neglecting the design process. Uh, the shortcoming of this approach may be best illustrated by Professor, Professor Anne Moden. Uh, she said normative design theories have been notoriously short-lived, and we can notice this in most design. They appear, they fade out, and they appear again. Since they are based on beliefs rather than proof, they are highly dependent on and typical uh, eventual victim of ideology, ideological fashions and economical cycles. And we don't want our most anymore to be a victim of this uh, 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 orientation. We want a research-based, evidence-based mosques. So what substantive approach is the opposite of normative, apparently. Uh, they ground their uh, claims on substance, on material, on data, on findings that are concluded using solid research methods. It uh, relies on compiling evidences. Uh, it has proof of goodness before the design itself. And when they, they use em, uh, emulations from the past, they don't use it in artificial or superficial manners because they know what each emulation uh, will do to the design, the consequences of the use. So in short, they actually shed light. They provide more cer certainty in front of us as mosque designers. So I'll show you, depends on the time I have, three methods. I'm not going to present results. I'm here presenting methods that we can use to actually substantiate our mosque design at morphological level, emotional impact, and environmental impact, which is actually the easier one. At morphology, we started to, we wanted to, uh, we ask ourselves, where is the optimum location of a mosque? We all ask ourselves this, right? What is the optimum location of a mosque? A location that actually transfers the place into livable space. But we didn't want to ask people. Those are kind of loose, loose uh, methods. Also questionnaires, interviews, as Dr. Uh, Jacqueline beautifully showed us, give us very important insight into people cognition, people perception, but they are not enough. We not need more uh, substance, more evidence-based design. So we wanted a, a measurable spatial, we wanted to understand a measurable spatial properties to locate the mosque to. Uh, so where to start from? We started to learn from our ancestors. We did our literature review. We started with the Omani Harat, that are all settlements in Oman. We picked four, Hart al Uqr, Hart uh, Sibani, Hart al-Yemen, Hart Fenja. Uh, and then we use space syntax. I don't know how, much, how many of you are familiar with the space syntax. Space syntax is a theory and set of methodology uh, produced by UCL in 1984. It has been used widely in many topics of research. And actually, I teach this course at master level, and I published on this several papers. But the essence of, of, of space syntax is that people move in line, and they socialize in convex spaces. Then they use graph theory to represent the spatial structure, whether it's at building level or city level, in a way that can be quantified. For example, this is a very simple structure. It can be city, it can be uh, any type of mosque, it can be any type of building. Then we represent each space with a node, a dot. Then if these spaces are connected in terms of accessibility and or visibility, depends what we are analyzing, then we create the connection. We rearrange the map in a way that it tells us how deep, how deep or shallow 
the spatial structure is from point one, then we can, using certain set of formulas, calculate many variables. Space syntax has up to now 11 uh, measurements. Some are local, some are global. Here I calculated the mean depth, for example, which we use later to calculate relative asymmetry, then uh, real relative asymmetry to arrive to what is in bold there in black bold called integration. Integration has been shown to be linked with plenty of evidences, like 20 cities around the world, it has been shown to be linked to people behavior. And then we represent each number with a color. So red, high, blue, low. So it's a visual interpretation of the values. For example, if we start from point A in this certain spatial structure, this is how the spatial structure will look and feel for the user. But if we start from point two, the spatial structure will look more deep and less shallow. Hence, more privacy. Uh, we applied this to uh, a sample of many traditional houses. Uh, and uh, we were looking for what, we, what I like to call spatial DNA, basmal faragiyya spatial DNA to the Omani houses. And actually, uh, this paper was published in a conference on Norway recently. It's available open access also. Uh, also, what we can do, after we do the analysis, we can plant what we call agents, who are people, or which are actually people. And then the algorithm will show us how the people are likely to move at urban or building level. This is this example as a building level, but we can do the same at urban level. So we can uh, propose different locations for the mosque and add these agents, and we can see how they move and interact with the spatial structure in a way that's measurable. Each bit you can see now, it's measurable. It can be converted into numbers, so you can do all your statistical analysis to provide the evidence needed. It's a very powerful tool. That is called agent analysis. Uh, back to our Harat, we did this to our Harat. We used two, two methods, axial lines and visibility graph analysis. It's better I hurry, yeah? Yeah. And then you can do all your correlation regressions. Another thing, we, another project, we want to study the impact, the emotional impact or sp spirituality of a design. Uh, so how we can measure emotions. Again, we didn't want to ask people directly. So what we did, we used an EEG system. It's a system that measures the brain wave and actually uh, interpret, interpret the measurement into emotional reaction. So this is the system uh, that we used. It's called Epoch Plus by Emotive. And it measures level of stress, level of engagement, level of uh, interest, excitement, focus, and relaxation. In most design, we want high level of relaxation, high level of uh, interest with low level of stress. And this is a video show you in real time. It shows you in real time what's happening on the design. Imagine putting a person in a VR system, virtual reality system with different design alternative, and then you can see in real time what's happening is this in his mind. So you can uh, uh, objectively assess the design uh, itself. Uh, we use this on the golden ratio in elevation and composition. Uh, and the result is a matrix of tens of thousands of, uh, of uh, data points. Then we go through filtering and curation process. Then the analysis. Once you have your, uh, your data ready for analysis, you can do your descriptive, t-test, ANOVAs, regression, whatever, cluster analysis, latent cluster analysis, whatever, uh, regression tree, whatever analysis you like to do and provide the evidence for that. This is a noticeable paper that I recently found. I thought I'm the first one to do that, but actually it's, this paper was published in 2022, and they want to see which color improve spirituality, and it's a, a, a mixture between turquoise, green, and blue that raises the alpha sign and reduces uh, the beta uh, brain wave, which actually correspond to what we interpret it as spirituality. Finally, at environmental level, I think uh, people are doing this, uh, fortunately. Uh, this project is uh, being done at our department, and uh, the team wants to characterize the thermal and energy performance of existing mosques uh, and uh, to evaluate uh, alternative uh, design strategies. And this project is led by Dr. Saleh Hassadi, and they use validated uh, energy uh, de design builder model. 
uh, we used 30, we surveyed 30, or uh, the team actually surveyed 30 mosques to come up with business as usual case. Then they start and they did measurement also to validate the model. And then they start in this stage, they are doing the alternative design strategies. So takeaways, I'm finishing, give me one minute please. Takeaways, it's the time now to move from what we like, which is easy, to what we know, which actually require more work from us as designers and as scientists also. Uh, and this is the time now to do this, to produce a long-lasting approach to most design. Uh, and actually the move from normative approach to substantive approach is actually not only the invitable way forward, but actually it's the sensible way forward in this era of technology. Uh, so I call for a creation, uh, for creating, pardon me, an evidence-based design culture among most designers. And I believe this step should start from competitions such as uh, Abdul Latif Fouzan competition for architecture because it sets the scene for future design. People start to mimic what one, last slide. Lastly, uh, I believe we should go beyond the architectural expressions that have been dictating our uh, mosques when designing mosques by listening to the evidences uh, that we have for, from religious and scientifically valid research in order to see our own blind spot. Thank you very much and apologies for the long presentation.